Okay, today we're talking about tables. A table essentially is very similar to a line graph. Like if you were to make a line graph, you would start with a table, you'd plug in the data, and then the software would generate the line graph based on these kinds of tables. But uh, people have a hard time interpreting these and deciding what to talk about and what patterns to approach. So I'll just say a few things first. You only have 20 minutes. For a table like this, you don't have time to mention every single number. Don't worry about it. It's fine to give the beginning and ending values, as well as any values that change, uh, that go against the general trend. So for example, if you're talking about, so in this, tr in this uh, graph here, we see two tables. The charts below show the results of a survey of 100,000 people asking whether they had traveled abroad and what the purpose of their travel had been, as well as their travel destinations between 2006 and 2010. So we've got our first table, visits abroad by UK residents by reason. We've got the years across the top, and we've got the purpose along the left side. So holidays, business, visits to friends and relatives, as well as other reasons. And then the second table shows the destinations of visits abroad by UK residents by main regions. That's to Western Europe, North America, and other areas. Again, 20, 2006 to 2010. So I'll give you just a few moments to look at the table and what do you think the main patterns are that you should talk about? What jumps out at you? Start with the big obvious stuff. People go um, on holiday the most. That's right. And that seems to be every year. By far. Okay. All right. What else do you notice? People also go um, um, to Western Europe the most every year. Yes. And that's by a huge margin. It's a huge difference between Western Europe and the other destinations. Okay. So we've got that. What about time? Has anything changed over the course of the study? Numbers are increasing. Mm -hmm. Every year? Yep. Be careful. Except to 2007. That's it. Yeah. So that's something worth noting. So overall, the trend goes up, except for 2007, there's a, sorry, there's a dip. There's a very small dip in the overall numbers. Also, I'd like you to note that the totals here are the same. The total at the bottom of the left side is the same as the total here on the far right column. Okay, okay so we've seen the, the overall numbers show a progression from the beginning to the end. We see that holidays by far were the main purpose for travel and that Western Europe is by far the main destination for travel. So in a table, a comparison that very often comes up is a difference is the difference between absolute values versus percentage differences. The reason this happens is, so let's take a look at holidays uh, between 2006 and 2010. So clearly holidays were the most uh, significant reason for travel. And they also showed the biggest increase, right? About 5,000 additional visits abroad for holidays over the period of the study. But when you look at items that have much smaller starting values, even small changes in absolute numbers translate into very large, 
percentage differences. Does that make sense? Yes. Right, so if, if something is starting at 10 and it goes up to 11, that's a change of one, and that change of one represents a 10% increase, right? If something goes from 10 to 11, that is a 10% increase, but it's an increase of one unit. But if something goes from one to two, that's also an increase of one unit, but it's a percentage increase of 100%. Okay, so one to two and 10 to 11 are the same increase in absolute terms. But for one of them, it's only a 10% increase. And for the other one, it's a 100% increase. That's the kind of contrast that you will very often find in tables. So for Europe, uh, sorry, rather for, for holiday visits, what was the, so we said about 5,000 extra visits over the period of the, uh, the study. What percentage increase was that? 33, around 33%. Yes. So if you're talking about these kinds of increases, you can use percentages or you can use fractions. So it increased by one third or it increased by about 33%. Now, what about business? Let's go through these. So it's a 50% increase from 3,100 to 4,500. Okay, so 50% increase. What about visits to friends and relatives from 2,700 to 3,200? 3250, something like 25%. And how about other reasons? It went down a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Down about 10, 15%, something like that. Okay, so holidays show the largest increase in absolute terms, but business shows the greatest increase in percentage terms. So th that's what you would talk about. Now, do you see a similar kind of pattern in the destinations? North America shows the greatest proportion of increase. Okay, and approximately, what is the percentage increase for North America? Went from 850 to 1920. More than 100%. That's right. You don't need to be any more precise than that. You don't have a calculator. Don't spend time making precise calculations. Just say it increased over 100%. Okay. And again, we see Western Europe here. Uh, the number of trips went up by about 5,000. But what percentage did that represent? 20%. About 25%. Right? 5,000 is about 25% of 20,000. So I'm just rounding. Okay. So you've got that, you've got that contrast between the big absolute increase and the big percentage increase in both tables. And that's what you would talk about in this graph. So in terms of our structure, we've got our structure at this point. Um, so the most salient features of the graph uh, after the intro would be th the reason for the visit would be body paragraph one, and then the destination would be body paragraph two. So our entire description is gonna have three paragraphs. Okay. Verb tense, what is our verb tense for the whole thing? Present. Who said present? Me, Rafael. <laughs> what uh, what year does the study end in? Yes, it's past tense. Yeah, so the whole thing is in past tense, except when you're talking about the graph itself. You can say the graph shows, it can be clearly seen, that's present tense, but the whole thing is going to be in past simple. So the verb tenses are actually quite easy for this. 
So again, the total was 22,180 to 29,375. And what percentage change does that uh, represent? How am I calculating this change? So if I round this as like 21 versus 28, then this is about 33% increase, right? Okay, and we've talked about the overall trend for each item. So let's go through those uh, very quickly. So holidays, our absolute change was roughly 5,000. So it was 15,250 to 20,701. And we said that was what percentage? 33. Roughly 33%. So use words like roughly, approximately. Um, and then one other thing that's worth noting is this other pattern that frequently comes up called one versus many. So if you look at the holidays, in every single year, more people went on holiday than for every other reason combined by far. It's a little bit smaller. Okay, and I'll share this document with you um, towards the end of the class. For now, you can just um, pay attention to this and you don't need to worry about the notes. You'll have the recording later and you'll have the document later. Okay, business. Absolute change was 3,100 to 4,500 and we said that was 50% increase. Okay, friends and relatives, absolute change was 2680 to 3252. Sorry, I'm gonna put these commas in here. Okay, and what percentage did we say that was? Twenty percent. Okay. Other reasons. Negative twenty percent. Okay, and then we've got our. destinations here. Oh, I know what happened. I know this got flipped around. Okay, so for Western Europe, the absolute change was 19,150. Okay, and the percentage change was 25%. And again, we see this one versus many pattern, right? Far exceeded the uh, visits abroad to all other destinations combined. And that's how you would phrase it. Okay, and North America, we've got 850 to 1920. And the percentage change is, we're just gonna call it over 100%. And then other, uh, these are backwards, so was 2180, went to 2,566, and the percentage change was about 25%.
roughly. So for all of these, it's not exact. Always put roughly or approximately. Okay. Just over, just under. You have to use language like that because the devil is in the details for this task. All right. Any questions so far? So we've got our numbers right now. Keep in mind, you can't ignore any of the data. You can't, if you want to ban seven or higher, you can't, for example, ignore other reasons and just not talk about it. You can't just not talk about other areas. You can't not give the total change. Those are the basics that you have to do. This is, um, you do as much of this as you can in the given time. So the more of this you do, the more of this you practice, the more of these kinds of details you can fit in. What else you should mention is if it decreased in a certain year, you definitely need to mention that. So pattern reversals would be holidays, 2007, do we have any others? Friends and relatives. Very tiny dip in 2007. Other reasons, 2007. And then, so other reasons was different, right? It declined on average. Then it went down, then it went up, and it went down and down. So, so I would say other reasons fluctuated. That's the language you wanna use. Okay, so there's nothing else to talk about here. For the structure, we're going to start with the introduction. And the introduction has two parts. So you've got your context and your overview. The context is just a very brief description of what the graph is about. And whether you're writing for IELTS or for, you know, in real life at work or for a school project, it's always going to start the same way. This is a really good real world task. Okay, so what are we talking about? Let's paraphrase the prompt. And I always suggest that you try paraphrasing it chunk by chunk. So our, where am I getting this from? This is what IELTS gives you. The charts below show the results. Okay, you'll get something like this. So the charts below show the results of a survey of 100,000 people asking whether they had traveled abroad and what the purpose of their travel had been, as well as their travel destination, between 2006 and 2010. So this is quite a bit longer than usual, but it's not terribly complicated. So what I would like you to do is take a minute or two to paraphrase this and just pop it in the chat. Remember, paraphrasing includes changing the order of words because that affects their grammar. So if you change an adjective to a verb or a noun to an adjective, that's considered paraphrasing. Change active voice to passive voice, that's also paraphrasing. When you say development, you mean change, right? Yeah. Changes in what? In traveling. In travel patterns? Uh, travel patterns. Uh, among whom? By... UK residents, tables all street changes and travel patterns by UK residents, uh, like the reason such as why they visited abroad and the destination and the destinations of their visits. Why this right? They visited abroad. And 
the destinations of their visits. Okay, and then we've got from 2006 to 2010. Okay, good. For higher marks, you would want to add additional details to the description. Uh, for example, Navin here, put the reasons, put holiday business, visit to friends and relatives and others. Okay. You could also put the locations, Western Europe, North America, and other places. Okay, so if you want a higher score than band seven on task achievement, then you need to add more detail. And this is kind of impossible to do if you're writing at a low level. You need a lot of practice to be able to do this. Because if you had an hour to do this, it would be no problem. But you've only got 20 minutes, and that's what makes this so hard. Okay, so we'll consider Navin's as a, like an advanced paraphrase. So the next part that we do in the introduction is the overview. So the overview is actually on the rubric. It's in the success criteria. You have to write a proper overview. So an overview, by definition, is... To, is general. Okay, overviews are general, but you don't want it to be too general and you don't want it to be too specific. If possible, don't provide any data. You can begin your overview always by saying, generally speaking, it can clearly be seen that this is a great um, opening gambit for the overview. Okay, so what is your overview going to include? This one is going to be longer than usual. Uh, you're going to mention the main reason for travel. You're going to mention the reason with the largest growth. Then in the second sentence, usually the overview is just one sentence. In this case, I suggest two. You would state the main destination as well as the destination with the largest growth. Okay, And that follows the pattern that we were talking about earlier, because in our body paragraphs, we're going to contrast absolute increases versus percentage increases. Okay, so two sentences for this one. Start your overview by, by uh, using this phrase or one of the other phrases that we use. And I'll give you a few minutes to do this. Another way to phrase this would be while holidays were the main purpose for travel, business, business travel witnessed what? The witness. highest level of growth, we can call it. Travel witness the highest level of growth. Um, in terms of destinations, Western Europe, Can you continue this one in the same pattern as the first sentence that I wrote? In terms of destinations, Western Europe was the prime destination for UK residents. Mm -hmm. Although? Although North America saw the... Uh, I, North America uh, saw the uh, greatest change, greatest person to change. Okay. Highest level of growth is the same as greatest percentage increase. Was the prime destination, was the number one destination I would I would just put it as number one destination. Mm -hmm. 
What's the number? Okay. This is the single most important sentence in the entire work. It's like your thesis statement in an essay. Uh, so right now we finished the intro paragraph, the two parts of the intro, the context and the general overview. So now we're going to have two body paragraphs. Uh, the first body paragraph is going to be about uh, the reason for visits abroad. The second body paragraph is going to be about destinations. And it's going to match your general overview. For the body paragraphs, I suggest, if possible, starting with a general topic sentence. But in this kind of situation where you've got total numbers plus this breakdown by holiday business, uh, friends and relatives and other, I would start by mentioning the total numbers in your first uh, sentence of each body paragraph and then going into the reasons. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Over the period of the study, the total number of trips abroad by UK residents, and then you mention the number of trips abroad by UK residents, and then you can indicate what percentage change it was. Then talk about holidays, and you can have this general intro sentence to this part. Holidays by far were the main purpose for travel. Then you talk about how they increased. You can talk about the little dip in 2007, and then you can mention the percentage change at the end. Then talk about business, then visiting friends and relatives, and then other reasons. Okay, body paragraph number two. You can also start this one with a general sentence. With respect to where UK residents spent time outside the country, Western Europe was the preferred destination. So in this one, I managed to avoid uh, numbers. So I'm just gonna talk about Western Europe and what happened there and what the percentage change was. Then I'll talk about North America and finally other areas. And there's no conclusion for this task. Okay, no concluding paragraph. It's fine to end a little bit abruptly like that. 